Hey, my name's Nick. Let's talk about the breath, specifically reverse breathing. What is that? Why should you care? Let's find out. But before we do, if you're one of those jump right into the action type, you're like, yeah, whatever nerd, just give me the breathing exercises. Here you go. Click the thing and go straight to the guide. You can get right after it. All right, if you're sticking around, we'll get into the breathing exercises in just a bit. But before we do, what is reverse breathing? Reverse breathing is a kind of breathing pattern disorder. That's the sciencey way of saying breathing wrong. Any chronic disruption of normal actions involved in breathing, that's a breathing pattern disorder. So normal breathing is driven by the action of the diaphragm, the chest moves out, the abdomen expands on the inhale, the chest moves in, the abdomen contracts on the exhale. That's the normal actions associated with breath. Reverse breathing is when you find yourself trapped in the reverse of that. The chest moves in, the abdomen contracts on the inhale, the chest moves out, the abdomen expands on the exhale. During reverse breathing, your accessory breathing muscles take a more dominant role than the diaphragm. So that's the intercostals, the muscles between the ribs, the scalenes, the serratus posterior, the muscle in the back, the things that assist with breathing take a more active dominant role than they normally would. So anyway, being trapped here is the key word. There are instances where you might want to reverse your breathing pattern. If you're sprinting, for example, or you're startled, those accessory breathing muscles are going to be taking a more dominant role. Reverse breathing is associated with the sympathetic nervous system. It's part of the flight or fight response. So having a sympathetic response like fight or flight that isn't a disorder, but when you're stuck in a constant state of stress and panic, that's when you start having problems. So that's the what, but why should reverse breathing matter to you? I'm going to read something I found. I pulled off of the article on reverse breathing from Physiopedia. I think it succinctly summarizes the research on breathing pattern disorders. It says a positive correlation has been found between breathing pattern disorders and premenstrual syndrome, chronic fatigue, neck, back, pelvic pain, fibromyalgia, and some aspects of anxiety and depression. So if you're interested in diving into that further, I'll leave a link to the article in the description and you can check out those studies listed there. So maybe we can't say that breathing pattern disorders like reverse breathing cause these problems, but there is some evidence that mm, learning to breathe correctly can alleviate them. This should be especially interesting to you if you're struggling with any of these things and there's no obvious cause. Breathing pattern disorders are a whole body disorder and they can affect everything. So if you're trying to overcome muscle pain, anxiety, the breath is definitely worth paying attention to. It's the low hanging fruit. I don't know if it gets any lower. It's free, it's fast, it's safe. And anyway, I thought about going into more studies on the salubrious effects of breathing and how breathing pattern disorders can screw with your health, but I figured you don't really need convincing that breathing correctly is probably good for you. So instead, we're going to answer the question you're really interested in, which is how to stop reverse breathing. All right, here are the step-by-step -step instructions for reprogramming your breath. Step number one, find a comfortable yet strong sitting position. This is more complicated than it sounds. So for now, I'll say just sit with your spine straight and have a broad base of support. You can do this sitting on the floor, sitting in a chair. If you find that your hips or your back begin to hurt, then check out my video on how to find a comfortable sitting position. I'll link that here. Step number two, put one hand on your chest and one hand on your abdomen. Don't push. This is just to get some feedback for where your breath is. Number three. 
begin to breathe naturally. That's naturally for you. Don't try to make any changes. Just take one or two minutes to observe your breath. Try to notice where in your torso your inhale begins. And then with your hands, try to observe where the breath ends. Try to observe what parts of the torso are moving and what parts are remaining still. Again, you don't need to change anything here. Just breathe naturally for you and make observations with your arms. Step number four, begin to breathe through your nose. If you're not already, invite a gentle constriction at your throat as if you're going to make the sound of the letter H. Like, I mean, in fact, you can make the sound of the letter H a few times if you're not sure what that feels like. That's the gentle constriction that we're looking for. So do the H sound, but with your mouth closed, inhaling and exhaling through your nose. Step number five, begin to focus on taking full exhales. At the bottom of every breath, push out just a little bit more air than what feels natural. That's pushing out the air. You're not pushing out your abdomen. With your hand on your abdomen, you should feel the abdomen pull in towards your spine as you exhale. Do this a few times. Take a full breath out, really breathe out, and then follow with your natural inhale. All right, step six. After your next exhale, begin inhaling into the deepest part of your abdomen only. You'll know that you're doing this right because with your hand on your abdomen, you'll feel the abdomen expand and you won't feel the chest move or it won't move very much. It can be helpful here to slow down the breath enough that it doesn't make any sound as it's passing through your nose. So you're breathing quietly. So do this for one or two minutes, feeling the action of the abdomen as you breathe, expanding as you inhale and contracting as you exhale. Step number seven, the next step is to begin taking slightly deeper breaths. You're going to continue with the same pace of breath, taking full breaths out, keeping your breath quiet. Only now carry the inhale up past the abdomen into the rib cage. Now that's not all the way up to the chest. If you want to imagine that we're filling the torso with a fluid, we would only be filling it up to the level of the solar plexus. So if it helps to have your hand on the solar plexus to feel the action of your breath, you can move the bottom hand up, but keep one hand on the chest because you still want to feel like the chest isn't moving very much. So practice breathing up as high as the solar plexus for one to two minutes and exhaling again all the way out completely. Inhale, feel the abdomen and then the bottom of the ribs expand. Exhaling, feel the ribs and then the abdomen contract. All right, step number eight. Keep the same pace of breath, still through the nose, still contracting the throat, still taking full breaths out, still breathing quietly, but now continue to inhale up past the ribs and into the chest. With your hands, feel first the low abdomen expand, then the ribs, and then Feel the upper hand on the chest expand. As you exhale, feel the chest drop first, then the ribs, and finally the abdomen. So as you inhale, you feel the breath expand from the torso, from the bottom to the top. And as you exhale, you feel your torso empty from the top to the bottom. All right, step number nine. As you approach the top of your next inhale, suck in the last little bit of air into your lungs as if you were sniffing a flower. Feel the muscles at the front of your neck engage. Your shoulders might shrug up towards your ears. You don't have to intentionally hold your breath, but try to feel for the moment that your body tells you it's time to exhale. And exhale slowly, again, emptying yourself from the top of your torso down to the bottom. Feel your chest, then your ribs, and then your abdomen relax. At the bottom of your breath, really empty your lungs. Squeeze that last little bit of air out. You don't need, again, to intentionally hold the breath. Just pause, 
wait for your body to give you the signal that it's time to breathe in again. Inhale, beginning from the bottom of the abdomen, go for a few rounds, taking full deep breaths, but not hurried, taking your time, focusing on how the body is moving with the breath. Right. Step number 10, finally, remove your hands from your chest and your abdomen, continue to breathe just as you do before. And as you do, feel your body in three dimensions. When you inhale, it's not just the front of the abdomen that expands, it's the sides and the low back. When you breathe into the ribs, it's not just the solar plexus that's lifting up, it's the sides of the ribs, the middle of the back. Take one or two minutes to continue taking full deep breaths here, breathing and participating in the breath with the whole circumference of your torso. And when you've had enough, lie down on the ground or in your bed and rest. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you drift off. And if this was helpful, do a friend a favor and share it. Remember to check out the links in the description for more free resources and get all of this and more beamed straight to your inbox every week. All right, until next time, take care.